Good morning, everyone. <coughs> really excited uh, to be here back at, uh, at uh, NOAA again. To start with, I'd like to take you on a little journey. A journey back to the year 1993. For those of you who don't remember, 1993 was the year that uh, Bill Clinton became uh, POTUS. You had uh, Robin Williams, who turned into Mrs. Doubtfire and became the most watched family movie of the year. And Steven Spielberg brought dinosaurs back to life for the first time in his first Jurassic Park movie. 1993 was also the year where the so-called World Wide Web was made free and available to anyone. In honor of this announcement, AT&T, a big uh, US telco giant, aired a series of commercial with their prediction of the future. Let's have a look. Have you ever borrowed a book from thousands of miles away? Across the country. Just your head. Okay, next step. Without stopping for directions. Or sent someone a fax. From the beach, you will. And the company that'll bring it to you, AT&T. I remember that year as well. It uh, actually was my high school year abroad in Michigan. And calls were still prohibitively expensive, so I sent uh, letters back to my friends and family here in Germany. And it took ages until they actually replied. I thought, how cool would it have been if I could have instantly messaged them and got stuff back? Now, when you look at AT&T, they got a lot of things right. They had the e-book, GPS, connected to driving. Yet it is not faxes that we're sending from the beaches. Instead, we're sending photos, so pictures, videos, messages, instantly in all with a little superpower computer that we all have in our pockets, the mobile phone. In fact, the world today moves so much faster than we had ever imagined. Even think about today, we're talking about driverless cars or 3D printing. And the future that we think will happen someday might come much quicker than we expect. So today, I want to talk about the bets that we as Facebook are placing on the future. Some of you might have seen Mark's announcement last night when we look at our mission of the company, that we're changing, we're looking forward, saying, we want a world, obviously, that is open and connected, but we also want a world where we bring people closer together and help to build communities. This is our product and technology roadmap, which we presented uh, at F8, our developer conference, a few weeks back. And it sets out the direction for how we want to work together, where we want to focus, in our platforms, in our ecosystem, and the products. Today, I want to talk about three of our bigger bets that are relevant for this ecosystem, for the startup ecosystem here today. I want to talk about our augmented reality platform, our virtual reality platform, and our messenger 2.0 platform. So let's start with our augmented reality platform. Some of you might have used this already, face masks. They're simple tools today, but people like to use them to share the everyday moments with their family, with their friends, with their communities. When we look at augmented reality, we look at three different use cases today. And the first is how we display information, like directions or messages. The second is how we add digital objects into the camera. And the third is how we enhance existing objects, like what you're wearing. And some of you might look at this and say today, it's you know, very simple stuff. It's kid stuff. When we look at this, we see something very different. We see the beginning of a new platform. And it is simple tools that people use today that help us to build better tools. And we see that people more and more also for those things use the camera. So we're making 
the camera the first augmented reality platform. And we open it up for our developer ecosystem already to build today. So you can all already build on those effects. And hopefully there's some startups here as well that will use this to help us build the future of augmented reality. I love this example. I actually have three kids of my own. Imagine you're sitting in a waiting room. And you can use your real life environment to play a cool game with them. Like in this case, to fend off the bad guys from getting to you. And we're opening up this part of the platform also later this year. Let's look at the second big bet we're placing, our virtual reality platform. So you all know we bought Oculus uh, a while back for the hardware that we need to build out the, uh, the virtual reality platform. And we focused more and more on building out the software. So one of the products we've launched is Facebook Spaces. Facebook Spaces is a cool place that lets you hang out with your friends virtually, and it feels very much real. So when you get together, you can meet up, you can connect, you can get a personal avatar, and then share stuff like, I don't know, what your new living room looks like in your apartment, or plan travel together. Think about business when you're on other sides of the planet, make that interaction so much more meaningful. Or well, Oculus in general, you just sees a lot of new great application. The other day I was climbing around what looked like the Grand Canyon, and it felt so real already until I fell, and then I didn't hit the ground, fortunately. Uh, but they're amazing applications. Think about education, like the schools, university that they're building, or in medical training. So the app, of course, uh, the ecosystem is open as well to build the great new experience on our virtual reality platform. Now let's have a look at the third big bet we're placing. It's our Messenger 2.0 platform. And today we're focusing on four areas. The first is our chat extensions. It basically allows you in a group chat to add bots and thus share them virally. And out of that messenger thread, you could uh, not only start a conversation, but also, like in this example, you could uh, agree on a restaurant you want to meet. And then right out of the app, actually, you could table with open table. There's other stuff, like when you hear a great song on radio with Spotify, you can share it to your friends in that thread. The second one is our Discover tab. And it's a great new thing that we have that allows you to discover great experiences on the platform. Like, uh, like in this example, you can, I don't know, pick uh, CNN, or you can discover places that are nearby your businesses, or use QR parametric codes to link out, uh, or to start a conversation with your business. I look at it a bit as a, I don't know, like a bot store that allows you to discover great experience. So also a great opportunity for startups to get in there and become part of this. The third area is our M, our interactive fan experience that allows you to uh, auto start certain conversation. And it could be like in this example, you straight out of Messenger, you start ordering food and also paying for it. It could be that you want to schedule a call, or you would want to collaborate, start a poll, or request money, and things like this. And then the fourth area is games. So out of the Messenger platform, you can actually, today, you can build games, and then you can play those games and challenge your friends to play with them. So clearly, Messenger 2.0 is you know, a platform that is open today, and we see great new experience built on this, and hopefully, we see some startups here as well that will help us build uh, the future and some great applications on the Messenger platform. We are really just at the beginning of all of this. And when we look at it, we're trying to share the advancements that we're making. But do we know if they're all going to work out? Of course not. But we want to make them work, and we want to make them work for you. The far future that was envisioned in 1993 is already more than reality today. And we're not faxing from the beach, but we're posting or sharing Instagram stories. Yet this journey is only 1% finished, and the future might turn out much crazier than we think today. And we're still in the very early days even of the internet. 
So let's work together and build the future. Thank you.